أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحسين عماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين والشفيل المبنبين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد ولا أهل بئه الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين ظهب الله أنهم الرجس وتحرهم تتحيرا ولا ننسى دائمة الباقي على عدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم أليس الصبح بقريب صلوات قلنا ذلك برا Referring to an incident in the lives of the believers in the past nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yehud starts the quotation of the statement, Alaysa subhu bi qareeb, is not the dawn near, means they were going through the time of difficulty, and that time of difficulty was in a figurative sense described as the darkness of the night. But we have to always have hope that the night will not, not last. Every night has a dawn after it. And the answer is, Alaysa subh bi qareeb, of course it is qareeb. When we look at this ayat which talks about hope, about the future, this is a concept which is universally accepted by all religions and all nations around the world. Everybody believes the time will come when things will become better, even when they are going through very difficult times. Look at the Muslim world at the moment. We have problems from outsiders, from insiders. I would say maybe from insiders more than the outsiders. The outsiders can only inflict harm on you if you allow that. It is more the problem within rather than without. But in all situations where there is difficulty, we always hope that a time will come when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about a change. He will send somebody who is known as the Savior, the Messiah, somebody who will bring the change where the world would be filled with zulm, it will be replaced with Adl, from injustice to justice, and that is the day that we are waiting for with the appearance of the Imam of our time, Al Hujjad ibn Al Hassan, Salawatullah alayhi. It's interesting to look at this concept of, you know, the Messiah or his Savior. It is so universal that it's difficult to find any school of thought which doesn't really believe in it in one form or another. When we look at the Islamic, uh, you know, sources, we see that there is this concept universally accepted by all Muslims, the concept of Al-Mahdi, who will come at the end of time. The only difference is in identifying that person. The Sunnis believe he will be born at the end of time, we believe he is already born. And he is identified as the twelfth of the Imams from the line of the Ahlul Bayt. But let me go back to the Bible and then Hadith from the Prophet before we go to uh, application of that in form of our twelfth Imam. Salawat <laughs> If you look at the Bible, you know, before that also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seems to have 
a special liking for number 12. But we'll leave that for ourselves for some, some other time. You know, there is sometimes, you know, preference for one number over the other. And 12 is that number that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seems to have preferred. If you look at the Bani Israel, the descendants of Yaqub, there also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَطَّعْنَاهُمْ إِثْنَعَةِ عَشَرَةَ أَصْبَاطًا أُمَمًا We divide them, divided them into 12 tribes of Bani Israel. When you look at Prophet Isa alayhi salam, when you talk about Hawariyun, his disciples, they were also 12. But what is important for us is the pledge or the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. After Ismail was born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, heard the, the dua of Ibrahim about his son. There's a very famous dua that where, Allah, uh, where Ibrahim alayhi salam prays that Allah increase his numbers among his descendants and raise a prophet among them who will recite your ayat, teach them uh, the book and wisdom. That actually the same words which are used in Surah Juma for the Prophet. Well, Allah said, I sent him. That is application of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, regarding his son Ismail. But in Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse number 20. Almighty God says to Ibrahim, as for Ismail, I have heard you. Behold. I have blessed, blessed him, I will make him fruitful, will multiply him exceedingly, twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. To multiply descendants of Ismail is a general statement, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to specify that out of this multitude of the descendants of Ismail, in form of Quraysh later on. When he says 12 princes, this actually, if you look at the history of the Arabs who come from Ismail, this cannot see any application. You cannot find any example of that unless you go, you go to the group known as the Al-A'imma Al-Isna, Isna Ashar, the 12 Imams from the line of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even among the Sunni sources, in Sayyid Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim, and many other sources, the Prophet had said very clearly, and this is amazing, you know, some of these things have still been preserved there. And this is because, you know, the way we say, God works in his own mysterious ways. People can do many things, but eventually the truth comes out. So you look at Sayyid Muslim, you look at Sayyid Bukhari, the words are different in some places. But the Prophet says that after me there will be Isna Ashara Khalifatan. Kulluhum min Quraysh. After me there will be twelve Khulafa, all of them will be from Quraysh. Some places he says, and these are all from the Sayyid Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim narrations, Yakunu ithna ashara amiran, there will be after me twelve leaders. The words Amir or the word Khalifa has been used, Kulluhum min Quraysh. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, a very prominent companion of the Prophet, who was known as the teacher of Quran, he says, um, somebody asked him a question to, towards his old age. And the question was, Ya Abdul Rahman, Hal Sa'altum Rasulullah, Kam Tam Likuhadhi Ummah Min Khalifa? This is the second or third generation now. So they are asking Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that you were a companion of the Prophet. Did you, any one of you, ever ask the Prophet, how many Khalifa will come after him? And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says, مَا سَعَلَنَا نَحَاذَ أَحَدٌ مُنذُ قَدَّمْتُ الْإِرَاقِ This is in Kufa. He says, since I have arrived here in Iraq, nobody asked me this question. You are the first person to ask me. And yes, 
We asked Rasulullah, uh, how many Khulafa will come after you? And the Prophet says, Isma Ashara Iddata Nuqba Bani Israel. Twelve of them will come, same as the number of the chiefs of Bani Israel. Salawat. <laughs> These are hadiths in the books of uh, the Sunni Muslims. It's created a lot of problem for the scholars of hadith among them. They don't know how to handle it or explain it. They give all different kinds of uh, you know, explanation. For example, one of the commentators of uh, Sahih al-Tirmidhi by the name of Ibn al-Arabi. You know, he says, well, uh, there are different ways of looking at this hadith. One would be you go by the sequence, historical, uh, you know, chronological order. After Rasulullah, 12 rulers. But then he says there is a problem. If you count by sequence, you have people like Yazid in that list. And even from their point of view, it doesn't really fit. They don't really, cannot uh, accept this concept that a person like Yazid will be included among the uh, Khalafa of Rasulullah. So they say, well, then let us go through the list of the Khalafa by looking at the character, not the sequence. And he says, Ibn al-Arabi says, if I go by that, I can only identify five of them. None other would qualify. And so he says, at the end, he says, He says, I don't know how to explain this hadith. Because if I go by sequence, Yazid is there as a problem. If I go by character, I don't really find many who would qualify as 12 khulafa, you know, according to the hadith of the Prophet. The translation or translator of Sahih Bukhari, if you look at the English version of it, he is being very clever, he has, you know, added words. He says, at least 12 khulafa. Now that word, at least, is not there in the hadith. This is his own way of trying to explain this uh, hadith. There are some who say what it means at the time when Islam, Islamic civilization was at its peak. Again, this is, you know, you need a proof to give that kind of, you know, context to that hadith. Some of them say, well, four of them refer, referring to Khulafa Rashidun. They have passed and other eight will come in the future, we don't know. So this hadith becomes a serious problem for the scholars of hadith among uh, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And interestingly, if you look at it, none of this list of khulafa in any madhab of the world of Islam would qualify as a realization of this hadith. If you go by the four khulafa, khulafa rashidun, well, known as the rightly guided, they are less than twelve. If you go by the family of Banu Umayyah and their Khulafa, they are more than 12. If you go with Banu Abbas, they are more than 12. And if you combine them, they, are, they become many times 12. If you go with the Uthmani Khulafa, you know, the Hadith everywhere said, Kulluhum min Quraysh. All of them will be from Quraysh. The Turkish Khulafa were not Arab, they were not Quraishi, they do not even qualify. So Osmani Khilafat is also completely out of this equation here. Look at the Shia groups. Among Shias, we have three existing groups. You know, besides us, there is a group known as the Ismailiya. The Ismailiya are divided into two, Nizariya and Musta'alawiya. Nizariya is the group which is known as the Arakhanis. Musta'alawiya is the group known as the Bukhris. Among Nizariya, the line of Imamat goes to the present one who is 49th Imam. So this hadith doesn't even fit that group. If you look at Musta'alawiya, the Bohri uh, Salsala of the Imams among the broader Shia community, um, the 21st Imam, they believe, went into Ghaybat and he's alive. And those who have come after him are, known, are not known as Imam, they are known as Da'i. More or less like, you know, we would call them on a basis of comparison, Marja Taqlid. With the lesser powers, of course. Uh, you, you know, so there also Imamat stops. Among the 
Musta'alawiyyah at the 21st Imam, which is more than 12. So the only group in this world who can say without any problem that we are the realization of that dua of Ibrahim and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith of Rasulullah in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim is a group known as Shia Isnaha Sharia. Salawat from the Quran. At least if we can prove that fundamental concept of Isna'a Sharia Shiaism, then the details, you know, as we say many times to our Muslim brothers, you know, the basics you can find in your sources. If you want the details, come to the family of the Prophet. So the basic concept of trial of Khalafa or Imams is there in your own books. But if you want to look at the details, you have to come to the family of the Prophet. And this evening I would like to share with you a very interesting uh, hadith which is from Baby Fatima to Zahra, salawatullah alayha. <laughs> this has been quoted by Sheikh Kulaini in Usul Kafi and by uh, Sheikh Saduq uh, in his. Uh, and I looked at the asnad, the chain of narrations, and this is a Sahih Hadith. And it is interesting for us because this is a, a Hadith which has been reconfirmed by the fifth Imam. The narration through the chain of uh, Sheikh Kulaini and Sheikh Saduq goes all the way uh, to Abu Basir who says that I heard from the sixth Imam, he says that when he was still young, he says, one day my father, referring to Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salatu wa salam, he saw Jabir bin Abdullah Ansari. If you remember, Jabir bin Abdullah Ansari is the longest living companion of the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet had told him that you will see one of my great grand grandsons by the name of Muhammad is known as Al-Baqir in the Torah and when you see him convey my salams to him. And so Jabir uh, was able to meet the Imam so he lived till the days of the fifth Imam and this is the sixth Imam narrating that conversation he says one day my father met Jabir bin Abdullah Ansari and he says, you know, I have a need. I want something from you. When you have, you know, time, let me know so I can come and see you alone. And Jabir says, you know, time is yours. Whenever you please, you know, you can come. Then the fifth Imam says to him that, you know, Jabir, can you tell me, can you narrate to me about the template which you saw in the hands of my grandmother Fatima bint Rasulullah salawatullah alayha. And what she said to you about it. And this is where Jabir says that I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when Imam Hussain was born I had the privilege of going to the house of Ali and Fatima and I congratulated Fatima on the birth of the newborn child and at that time I saw in her hands lawhan akhbar a tablet you know and a material on which things are written those days the greenish kind and I saw the writing on that was in uh, white ink and when I looked at it, I, I told her, I asked her, Bi'abi wa, wa ummi ya binta Rasulullah ma havallah. That all the daughter of the Prophet, may my parents be sacrificed for you. What is this tablet that you are carrying in your hands? And she says, this is actually an epistle, a written uh, material which 
Almighty God has gifted to his messenger, to my father, and in it are the names of my father, my husband, my two sons, and the names of the successors who will come from my children. And my father gave it to me as a way of pleasing me on this occasion. So it seems this is linked with the birth of Imam Hussain bin Ali alayhi salatu wa salam. Jabir says, you know, I asked her to look at it and she gave it to me. And I looked at it and I asked permission to uh, copy the entire, you know, text. And maybe Fatima allowed that. This is where um, the fifth Imam now says, now it's not that Imam didn't know about it. This is interesting for us. He knew, but probably he wanted the community to hear, to hear from another witness who lived during the time of the fifth Imam. So he says, فَحَلْ لَكَ يَا جَابِرْ أَنْ تَعْرِضُهُ عَلَيَّ Oh Jabir, do you still have that with you? The copy that you made? Can you show it to me? And he said, yes. Jabir says, yes, come with me. So Imam followed him and the sixth Imam is there. Um, they, want, they went to the house of uh, Jabir and he took out a parchment in which the writing was there and then the fifth Imam says to him, this is interesting, he says, Jabir, keep that writing in front of yourself, look at it, and I will read to you from my own memory what is written in that epistle. I would like you to just check word to word and tell me whether it is different or same. And Imam read the whole thing, and Jabir followed it. At the end, Jabir says, فَأَشْحَدُ بِاللَّهِ أَنِّ حَاكَذَا رَعَيْتُهُ فِي اللَّوْحِ مَكْتُوبًا And then he says, you know, فَمَا خَالَفَ حَرْفٌ حَرْفًا He says, not a single word was different from what the Imam was saying and what, what Jabir had copied in that nuskha and the copy for himself. And he says, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what I saw in the epistle which was with Fatima to Zahra salawatullah alayhi salawatullah Now what was in it? This is where the narration goes on and I'll leave the Arabic because of the time issue بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هذا كتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم لمحمد نبيه ونوره وسفيره وحجابه ودليله نزل به الروح العمين من عند رب العالمين. That this is actually a writing or a letter from Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Great and the Wise to Muhammad his Prophet his his Nur and his Light and his uh, emissary and his proof on this earth for the people. And this was brought from the Lord of the Universe by Jibreel himself. Azim ya Muhammad Asma'i, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Glorify, O Muhammad, my names, show gratitude for my blessings, and do not oppose my signs. I verily am Allah, there is no God but me. I am destroyer of the tyrants, helper of the oppressors, and the judge of the day of judgment. I verily am Allah, there is no God but me. So whosoever hopes for a grace other than mine, or fears other than my justice, I shall punish him a punishment that no one would have been inflicted with that from the universe. Therefore serve only me and put your trust on me only. And then the writing goes on from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, I have not sent a prophet, but that before his life is completed and his term ends, I appoint a successor for him. I have surely preferred, preferred you over the prophets and have preferred your successor over the successors. And I have honored you with your two lions and grandsons 
على حسن ولا حسين صلوات الله عليه وسلم And I made Hassan the treasurer of my knowledge after the ending of his father's term. Now the list of the Imams is, is coming in there. After Ali has been mentioned, then I made Hussein the trustee of my revelation, honored him with martyrdom, and sealed for him the felicity. He is the best of those who were martyred and the most high in status among the martyrs. And I placed my complete word with him and my sufficient proof by him. Then the Imams after them, Imam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this writing says, by his descendants, by the descendants of Hussein, I reward and I punish. Means the Imams who will come after Hussein will be from his descendants and those who believe in them I will reward them and those who do not believe in them, I'll punish them. The first among his descendants is Ali, Sayyid al Abidin wa Zaynu Awliya al Ma'adin, the chief of worshippers and the prince of my past friends. And then going to the fifth Imam and his son, who resembles his praiseworthy grandfather, Muhammad, the digger of my knowledge and the treasure of my wisdom. And then referring to the sixth Imam, and this is amazing because we know that after the sixth Imam, there was a lot of division within the community. Those who doubt in Jafar will perish. To, re to reject him is like rejecting me. It is indeed my true place that I shall hon honor Jafar and make him beloved among his followers, his helpers, and his friends. And then coming to the seventh Imam. And after him, Musa will be uh, in the time of chaos and blinding misguidance. There will be a lot of division after uh, the sixth Imam. Because surely the trade of my commandments does not cut off. My proof is not hidden and verily my friends will be fed with a full cup of guidance. Whoever op opposes one of them, he has indeed opposed my blessings. Because the guidance through the Imam is the greatest of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever changes a verse from my book, he has ascribed a lie to me. So at the end of Musa's term, you know, condemnation be for those fabricators and opponents against my servant, my beloved, my choice in form of Ali, Ar-Rida, my Wali, my helper, and the one upon whom I put the task of nubuwwat, not the status of nubuwwat, but the work of guidance. And I will test him with the task, the task of carrying that burden. An ar arrogant Satan will kill him. He will be buried alongside the worst of my creatures in the town that was built by the righteous, righteous servant, uh, referring to Zulqarnayn. And this refers to the uh, prediction about the, uh, the place where Imam Raza salam would be buried, and that is Tus. It's a city which was built by Zulqarnayn. Salawat from the That lawh of Fatima continues. And it just says, It is indeed my true pleasure that I shall make him happy with his son Muhammad, Muhammad al Taqi his successor after him and the heir of his knowledge. He is the treasure of my knowledge. The, he is the one who keeps my secrets and my proof over my creatures. None shall believe him but that I will make the paradise his destination and will make him intercessor of 70 of his family members who all were, would be worthy of the fire of Jahannam. So those who follow the ninth Imam in a true sense, Allah will even give the right of shafaat to them uh, for their own family members. I will seal the felicity for his son Ali, Ali an naqi my wali, my helper and the witness among my creatures and my trustee upon my revelation. Referring to the 11th Imam, the statement goes on, from him I will bring forth the one 
who shall call the people to my way and who will be the treasure of my knowledge al hasan and then at the end we come to the 12th imam where the words from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that sahifa of fatima says wa ukmilu dhalika bi ibnihi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and i will complete this process of guidance through his son Muhammad referring to the 12th Imam Rahmatan lil alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that title to Rasulullah in the Quran but then towards the end of the time when the mission of the Prophet will find its full realization Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says not only the first Muhammad is Rahmatan lil alameen even the last Muhammad will be Rahmatun Lil Alameen. Salawat wa Nekbar. Alayhi Kamal Musa, wa Baha'u Isa, wa Sabru Ayyub. Upon him shall converge the perfection of Musa alayhi salam, and the grace of Isa alayhi salam, and the patience uh, of Ayyub. It's important here to see that, you know, Prophet Musa alayhi salam was sahib sharia The first comprehensive sharia and book of laws given to any prophet was Musa alayhi salam. And Imam Mahdi will be the holder of the last sharia. And then when it comes to the grace and spirituality of Isa alayhi salam, Allah says, I took the perfection of Musa, combined that with the spirituality of Isa, and then I gave, added the sovereign of Ayyub to my last successor and Khalifa on this earth. Salawat Allah. 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 Sabr for what? Yes, Imam Zain al Abidin is known as Sayyid al Sadirin. But I think the level of sabr which was required for the present Imam during the time of the Ghaybat is even more than that. Because it is centuries. All the suffering of the people that he sees. It's not only we who are waiting for his appearance. He is also praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that permission to make his appearance. So he is also distressed when the community is distressed. He is also worried when we are worried. He is also saddened when we are sad. And he, that needs that sabr, sabr of Ayyub alayhi salam. And there is a statement about the time of the ghaybat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this epistle says, My friends, during his era of ghaybat will be subdued. Their heads will be presented by the tyrants to one another. You know, like the heads of the kuffar that they used to kill. They will be killed and burned. They will be in fear and they will be afraid. The earth will be painted. The earth, the ground will be painted with their blood. Cry of anguish will spread among their women. But then a time will come. The time will come where all these things will change. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember these Imams that I mentioned. These are my true friends. And through them I avert every curse and blinding misguidance. Through them I shall reveal the deceiving plots and eliminate the chains and shackles which are on you. They are the ones upon whom the blessings and the mercy of their Lord descend and they are they are the rightly guided ones. Salawat from Nekbar. When we look at this, this is what I was saying that the basic concepts can even be seen in the books of the Muslims in general, Shia and Sunnis. But if you want to look at the details, this is where you have to come to the family of the Prophet. You know, just as we talk about the issue of, you know, zulm of Ahlul Bayt. Nobody denies Karbala happened. All agree. 
But the details go and ask those who were hurt, whose family was, were killed in front of them. Similarly, on the issue of imamat, we can see the basic concepts in the Quran and the hadith of Shia and Sunni alike. But if you want to know the details, the 12 khulafa you will see in Sahih Bukhari. But the names of those 12 khulafa, you have to come to the hadith of the Ahlul Bayt. And this Lawh of Fatima is one example of that. Salawat <laughs> اکثر ہم لوگوں سے کہا جاتا ہے کہ بھئی آپ غائب امام کو مانتے ہیں اور مزاق اڑاتے ہیں جبکہ اس کانسپ کا آپ دیکھیں مختلف جو مذاہب آئے ہیں انکلوڈنگ آج کل جو ہمارے بہری شویہ حضرات ہیں ان کے بھی ٹوینٹی فرسٹ امام جو ہیں وہ غیبت میں ہیں تو یہ کوئی یونیک کانسپ صرف ہم لوگوں کا نہیں ہے آئیڈنٹیفیکیشن میں پرابلمز ہو جاتے ہیں لیکن کانسپٹ ہمارے ریزورسز میں اور ہمارے احادیث میں ہے فرم ڈے وان آج صرف اردو میں مختصراً سورہ قدر کی ایک آیت کو آپ کے سامنے پیش کرنا چاہیں گے کہ ہم لوگ اسلامی کیلنڈر میں بہت سے دنوں کو مناتے ہیں we observe many many events عید الفطر عید الفطر کا دن ہے عید العزہ جناب ابراہیم کی یاد کا دن ہے ملاد النبی رسول اللہ کی ولادت کا دن ہے اس کی یاد منائی جا رہی ہے یا مثلا تیرہ رجب امام حسین امیر المومنین کی ولادت کا دن ہے یا ٹوئنٹی سیونت رجب the beginning of the revelation of قرآن it's the anniversary of that جتنے واقعات اس کیلنڈر میں ہیں سب anniversaries ہیں چاہے وہ سیڈ ہو یا ہیپی اوکیجنز ہو لیکن ایک دن ہے جو اس تمام مسلمان مانتے ہیں مناتے ہیں بلکہ وہ شب ہے جسے ہم لوگ کہتے ہیں لیلت القدر لیلت القدر کسی رات کی یاد نہیں ہے جسے ہم لوگ کہتے ہیں میراج کی رات اس سال تو میراج نہیں ہے نا نا لاسٹ ایر ہوئی نا اس سال ہوئی نا نیکسٹ ایر ہوگی میراج کی انیورسری ہے وہ لیکن شب قدر آپ کسی مسلمان سے پوچھئے کیا کہیں گے کہ کوئی واقعہ تھا جس کی یاد منا رہے ہیں یا یہ یہی رات خود جو ہے شب قدر ہے اور برکت کی رات ہے سو شب قدر is an ongoing thing it happens every year اور خدا وند عالم نے قرآن میں کیا کہا ہے تنزل الملائکت والروح فیہا بإذن ربهم من کل عمر ملائکہ اور جبرائیل نازل ہوتے ہیں تنزل یہ تنزل کا ورڈ جو ہے عربک میں this is for continuous it means every year it happens جب بھی لیلت القدر ہوتی ہے ملائکہ اور جبرائیل آتے ہیں اس زمین پر اللہ کے عمر کو لے کر فیہا فیہا سے مراد فی لیلت القدر سوال یہ ہے کہ ملائکہ جب آتے ہیں تو کہاں جاتے ہیں وائٹ ہاؤز میں جاتے ہیں یا ریڈ سکوئر میں جاتے ہیں یا انڈیا کے ریڈ فورٹ میں جاتے ہیں اسلام آباد کو تو چھوڑیے فیلال اس کی بات نہیں کریں گے ریاض میں جاتے ہیں پیریس میں جاتے ہیں ڈاؤننگ سٹریٹ میں جاتے ہیں یہ ملائکہ اترتے ہیں کہاں عمر الہی کو کس کے پاس لے جاتے ہیں آپ یہ بتائیے اس لیے کہ آپ کے تو عثمانی خلفہ کے بعد تو سلسلہ خلافت ختم ہو گیا تو جاتے ہیں کہاں آئیں گے آپ کا کام ہے آپ تلاش کریں یہ ملائکہ ہر سال لیلت القدر میں جب زمین پر آتے ہیں کہاں اترتے ہیں آپ ڈھونڈیں اور جس کو آپ ڈھونڈیں گے وہ ہمارا امام زمانہ اور امام وقت ہے سلوات کو نہیں کریں یا تو آپ کہیں کہ ملائکہ صرف رسول اسلام پر نازل ہوئے تھے اور سلسلہ ختم ہو گیا یا یہ کہ آپ کہیں یا تنزل ایوری ایر ان لیلت القدر ملائکہ ڈسینڈ تو اب تو رسول نہیں ہے کس کے پاس آتے ہیں 
और अगर आप मानते हैं कि वो आते हैं किसी के पास तो वो कौन वो हजत खुदा कौन है और यही हमारा अकीदा है कि वो हमारे बारहवें इमाम है इसलिए कि रसूल ने कहा है कि हमारे बाद सिर्फ बारह खलफा होंगे तेरह नहीं होंगे ग्यारह नहीं होंगे और वही हमारे इमाम में असर हैं और वही हमारे इमाम में वक्त हैं अजल्ला तरज शरीफ सलवाद बने पर खुदा वंद आलम की बारगाह से दुआ खुदा वंद इस कलिलबाज कबूल फरमा हमारे गुनाहों को बख्श दे हमारे तोफ़ीक़ात में इजाफा फरमा इमाम के ूर में ताजिल फरमा रब बना तो कबल मिन्न कन तस्मिन